Hello there, it's me, Sari, here again, and today I thought I'd show you how I bound these together and actually made it look like this, but I'll just try to make it a little bit different in this video. I'm going to make it look like this, so it's going to be sort of like checkerboard looking thing. I have prepared three pieces like this, and I do like the way that the string is actually showing on the back or in the back and then I got this wonderful binding here the piano hinge binding I suppose it's called and then I can see all of the chords beauty in the center like this and then I got that beautiful binding there what yes get once more and you could actually be satisfied with just two pieces of paper bound together like this because sometimes four pages could be just what you need, couldn't it? And I chose to make it a little bit bigger this time. You can see that there's a difference. And the reason for this is because I do like to keep my photos vertical. So in this case I do actually have some room left for decorations and even some pattern paper to show in the background. So what I did with these is that I did cut a piece of paper as big as I could. This is a photo album paper, so it isn't a regular cardstock. It's smooth and it's a little bit sturdier, and I like that a lot. And I did score it in the center, and then I just decided on what kind of a measurement I wanted that to be. And I used my score pal here. And I just did fold it by hand, just to give it some sort of a marking there. And I found just a proper space to do it, to do the scoring at. And then I thought I'd find where I could find the best mark for this. And I ended up taking the centerpiece there, down to the dot there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a dot here anyway. And I did like so, and to make it easier, I just turned it over like so, and did score at the same place on the other side. So now I'm, I'm sure I actually got the same amount of space between, on both sides of that center score line. And what I did after that is I really, really creased it securely, and even took these, the two scored lines, I, I creased crease them a little bit better. And then I went ahead and used the same score pal here. This one is the centimeter one. And as it were, I lucked out having this at two, 22 centimeters long here. So I just decided on keeping these at two centimeters, two centimeter intervals. And I make the marks, made the marks with that pink pencil, so it would be it would be it would be visible for you here on the video as well as for me while I was going to do the cutting. So what I did, I just cut along those lines down to that scored line down there, and I did so on all of the eight pieces of paper. So now I think that we are going to be ready for some magic. It's going to take me some time now, so you have to bear with me. I've got two pieces of paper, and you can still see those pink marks there. Pretty fancy looking, isn't it? So, what I'm going to do, since I have scored the, all of these three lines, it's going to be easy for me to just put this one down. Just going to pinch it together like so. And then I'm going to go to the second or the third one. I'm just going to leave one in in between. I'm just going to push them down like so, easy peasy, like this. And then you've got something that looks like that, mountain and valley style. And on this one I'm just, just going to do the opposite. I'm just going to put that one down and keep that one up. And I'm going to take that one down, just leaving one in, in between in every segment like so. No, you see, I made a mistake now, didn't I? So all I have to do is just take them all up again. Sometimes you just don't succeed the first time, now do you? So I'm going to keep this one up and I'm going to take that one down. So the second is going to go down 
and the fourth, and the sixth, and so forth. So now I think we are cooking. So you see, every second like this. So and then it's up to you what you want to put in between. Some people like to put pieces of wood. If you would like to use would like to use these skewers, you would just sew it together like this. Take take the pieces of paper here and there and just go all the way through. It's a bit tricky with these skewers. I find it a little bit easier with the strings, even though it's going to take me some while to do this. The first one isn't going to be that much of a hassle, but I do want both strings to go through. In the first book I used this wonderful turquoise string and I do love this. But since I want to make this album for I don't know really what kind of a topic, I'm just going to keep it pretty simple, sort of vintage looking with two colours of string. A beige one and a brown one. And I'm hoping I'll be able to make that work when it comes to decorating it later. So now I have put the string through the first loop. Let's call these loops, shall we? So I'm going to take the second one. I'm just going to keep the strings on top. And if I can't get both of them through at the same time, I'm just going to go underneath with my finger and just force them through like so. And since this is string, or paper string this is actually, so it's pretty flexible like so. And now I have to take both of these through the first segment yet once more. And it is a bit tricky to get both of them out at the same time, so I find it a little bit easier guiding these with my finger. I didn't say it was easy, but it's easier. So you have to be patient, which I have told you a couple of times isn't one of my strengths. But I might as well just show you how much struggle there is and how much satisfaction once you have done this. So now you've got starting to see that this the, these pieces of string are going to look like a worm going through, or perhaps a snake even. So I'm just going to go back and forth. Once you get the hang of it, you know what to do, but it's a bit tricky, you know. Just have to stay patient. You know, when I come to think about... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm out of frame here. Really sorry about that. Fortunately, I found that out before I went too far. Let's see if I can stay in frame this time. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get the second loop here. Just try to... It's a bit tricky, you know. Sometimes you just want to be a bit closer to your body like so. Well, just going to thread them through like so. I started talking about the vices, and I think that it was Wesley Snipes. Could it be in Demolition Man or something? And he said something about patience, not be virtue. Virtue is the word I'm looking for. So patience wasn't one of his virtues when he was busy killing off people there. So that is something that I have been hanging on to as a saying for myself, because it actually does fit me as a person. I, I'm sort of a person that likes to try things out, not necessarily always finishing them. Let's see where I can end up with this. Here they come, and I'm just going to pull them like so. It's sort of like cross-stitching this is. And you might wonder, how on earth am I going to get the strings to come out? without breaking the paper. Well, that's where the magic happens. And I'm going to tell you, you will be surprised. But um, I'm hoping the force will be with me on the fourth one here as well. I haven't broken any papers as yet. So let's see. A couple of more to go. Just 
just a little guidance underneath with my finger there and then the final one like so so now you've got this like that and I've got a knot here just in case I were to let it slip so all I do now is just pull isn't that magic like I just pulled it as you see nothing broke and now I'm actually really able to put the string where I want it and then it's up to me to decide on how I want these pages to match you see I've got this kind of a situation here and I'm thinking that this might actually do the trick I'm just going to adjust the pieces of string to make them look sort of as I want them to be and I'm going to want a knot here. I'm just going to pull that one down a little bit so I have some room to actually do the knot. Just going to pull it like so and let's see. You see it's all right even and now it could look sort of marvelous and I couldn't it. So let's see I'm going to cut that one off and even that one because that one is too long I think. So now we've got either four singular books with a wonderful binding on the back and a smashing binding on the inside. And as I told you before, this could be enough with just four pages. But if I wanted to bind these together, I haven't really discovered a nice way to do it without getting it too bulky. On this one, I did as follows. I just bound two pieces of two sections or see oh, I'm not sure what you call it two sections together by putting in an extra piece of paper as you can see there I made it sort of into a hinge and then I just glued it together with these white double-sided foam tapes what that does is it gives the pocket some sort of an opening I'm not sure that I'm that happy about it so perhaps I should just make those hinges or I should just glue them together but the thing is that if I glue them together I will be missing out on the opportunity of having a pocket here but on the other hand I will actually be able to just keep this book a bit closed look looking if I wanted to so I think I'll just go for the easy way this time so I'm just going to put some glue and I might actually put it you like here or perhaps I didn't I just actually satisfy myself get satisfied by or suffice by putting it like so perhaps I needn't put it and then I'm just going to make sure that these are going to be every second so they are I'm not going to put two of the same together looking at the spine so now I'm just going to make sure that I can butt these up I'm just going to take the corner there with the corner there and uh, just going to rub off the excess tape there so easily as this I've actually created a pocket but keeping it on the sort of flat side you see this is the drawback actually of just gluing things together like this it gets sort of small but tight it could be a benefit of course as well I think I'll just go for this with this one and if I'm going to put that one there it will be the every second method there so I'm going to be satisfied with that but if you don't want to keep these booklet pieces so tightly together I would suggest you to make a couple of hinges and glue them down with just regular tape or something in order to keep it still sort of tight just going to put them down like so and I've got my three pieces together like that and for this one I'm just going to finish it off with putting that one there and it's going to be nice looking I think so let's see I'm going to open it flat like so a bit easier for me to work with that one went away and let's see if I'm going to make it right even with this one 
I can see that this one makes a perfect ending there. So, just going to take corner against corner. And butt it up with this one as well. And just push it down the line like so. So now you've got it here. And the benefit of actually having strings instead of those skewers is of course that while it might be looking nice with the skewers like that, if you are not paying attention to how short or long the skewers could be, some people just leave them outside looking like this, and then they just put a string or something to tie, tie them together. They make eight loops or something like that. You could, of course, cut these a bit shorter than the book, but then you have to be sure, make sure that uh, the book is as even here, but the ending should be different. So I'm not sure if you're going to be able to make this every second kind of look here. Perhaps you could manage to pull this kind of look off, uh, just making sure that you have the right amount of these uh, hinge bits and so they can cover up the skewers because they, I think that the skewers could be nice but I don't want them to be pointing at me or just injuring me in um, somehow. Well, so here the book is and now it's up to me to just start uh, decorating it. I got a pocket here, a tight one. I could be happy with that perhaps. Another pocket here. I could go further, isn't there's another pocket here? So you see, there's a, there are some hidden pockets, perhaps you could say. But I do like this sort of a binding method. I do like the way that the strings are showing through, both in the back and in the center. And in between there is this wonderful piano hinge binding. Couldn't you just die? All right, I'm going to sign off right now, and I do hope you're going to make your own piano bound, piano hinge bound albums. Please let me know if you do. Bye bye.